Right. Um, sorry we've kept you waiting a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to thank Mark very much for agreeing to do this um, because it is quite nerve-wracking uh, to be suddenly sat in front of 300 or 400 people um, and asked that questions that? about that, I think. Um, quick tot. Um, but... How many? <laughs> well, <laughs> strength in numbers. But, in a lot of ways, I think that we should look at this not so much as a talk in the great tradition of ICA talks as, as a happening. Um, because <laughs> I, I like to think of this as being a happening uh, in the sense that in the illustrious <coughs> history of the ICA there's been um, some connection with pop and rock music. Most of us here, I suspect, will remember those fetid occasions known as the Harp ICA Rock Week um, where sort of six gallons of cheap beer was swirled around by terrible indie groups. Um, and even earlier than that, uh, I was reading the other day, the, there was a happening when Jim Morrison of a group I think called The Doors um, turned up here and he, he had to sit in a... <laughs> he had to sit in an egg because um, it was 1966 I think and he sat in an egg and visitors to the ICA um, paid their quid or whatever it was and were ushered one by one past Jim Morrison who was sitting in his egg and they could ask him questions. <laughs> You know, history sadly does not tell us what his answers were, um, but uh, it happened. Now, in a lot of ways, um, the fall, uh, Mark's group, are the absolute antithesis of both the Harp ICA Rock Week and the Doors. In fact, I think in some ways they're the absolute antithesis of everything that is commonly known as pop and rock culture. Uh, I don't particularly want this evening to turn into some sort of kind of critical theory debate um, because I don't think that that's particularly interesting uh, when applied to pop music. Um, but what I do want to do um, is to give Mark a chance uh, to talk a little bit about how it all came to be. And so my first question, talking about antitheses, is that many of us would have been quite surprised the other week to see the glorious moment uh, when you appeared on top of the pops. With the spirals, yeah. With the inspirals. Could you tell me what was it like finally being on top of the pops? <laughs> I was just doing them a favour, I <laughs> It's, I mean, Simon Bates the famous radio on disc jockey. Well, they hate us, aren't they? Oh. They just hate our guts. I won't, won't take the fall on them, Because, as I said, Simon, Simon Bates... It's really funny. They, they really made it hard for us, you know. In what way? I think it was like rubbish dressing rooms and stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then you had Simon Mayo and there's all these... And they, 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 had, they, had to, they had to get people to force young girls round Simon Mayo. <laughs> So, so they were like, like pushing them. <laughs> like, like this the sort of BBC look, you know, guy. Yeah. Guys in corduroys and beards. Yeah. But like pushing like young girls round him. Because they didn't want to go round him. <laughs> so, so, so then he started imitating me. You know, like taking the piss out of me. Mm -hmm. like. So how did you find out? Was it all right? <laughs> I spoke straight away to her. They don't like. They don't like. They don't like us. Well, they don't like me. It's. I mean, do you think that this is an extension? I mean, I heard because they don't like me because it's you know it's, it's like thought of as a, a John Peel sort of thing. Mm. So, you know. But Simon. Like Bates. what's he doing here? <laughs> Simon Bates once said, I gather, that uh, he wouldn't play a full record on Radio One if it was the last record on earth. And, I mean, I sort of no, think it's quite basic. a compliment. Mm -hmm. But why, why, why do you think, why, why, do they, why do they hate you so much? Me personally, or the group? The group. <laughs> and you, maybe. I, mean. I don't know. I don't understand it at all. 
do you think I've done them any harm? <laughs> Just jerks, aren't they? Let's face it. <laughs> Do you think that the sort of the way that they don't, no, no, the, the basic fact is they don't, they can't grasp what the fall is about. They can't grasp what I'm about. You know, pe people can say all sorts about me, but it's just like water off a duck's back. But you know, they can't knock the group. The group's good. I mean. One of the things <laughs> I've always found quite strange is the fact that here, there and everywhere, the fall are quoted as being a seminal group. It seems from sort of like since the fall started. Um, yeah, but th then you blow the racket, don't you? Mm. You're not allowed to be good. No, you're not, you're not allowed to be good in Britain, Michael. Think about it. Well, yeah, it's true, it's true. But do you think that seminal is a quick way to a sort of commercial grave? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the minimalist theatre of Marcus. <laughs> when the fall started, uh, when, 1977? About that, yeah, 78. What were the early reactions to Extreme violence, ash <laughs> ashtrays and stuff like that. Do you think it's pretty much the same? Yeah, life goes, <laughs> life goes in a circle. Don't it? <laughs> because there's a sleeve note on the back of um, Total's Turn called yeah. "Call Yourselves Bloody Professionals," where you talk about kind of the difficulty and the danger of being the fool in working men's clubs. Mm -hmm. Can you remember what those concerts were like? I can remember. I think I'm bloody retired or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we had to work. <laughs> we had to work in working men's clubs, Mike, because um, you know we, 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 they, they wouldn't let us in the rock clubs. So that, that, that's what I'm saying. Joking apart, mm. you know what I mean. It was the same story in 1977. If, if you didn't look like a punk, you weren't allowed to play anywhere. If you didn't have like, uh, you know, orange flaring hair and all that. <laughs> no, really. You were, people forget what it was like. Mm. And, and me, me, and, me and the group were like, uh, like we're about 16, 17. I mean, did you th did, I mean, you, you'd never thought so of it. So we know, so we had to do working men's clubs to earn a living. So it's all could keep the group going. Mm. So we used to go to Doncaster and places like that, Wakefield. And what were the audiences they used to hearing? They were used to hearing like Led Zepp run through. Mm. A bit like the pop music industry today, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Because the Fool, I mean, have never really sort of kind of fitted as a punk rock group. Did you ever think of the Fool as a punk rock group? It's funny that, because uh, uh, the last couple of months people will keep uh, ringing me up and saying I'm a punk, and all this. <laughs> <laughs> they do go, like, I'm going to punch your lights out, you're a punk. <laughs> <laughs> and they put the phone down. <laughs> Nirvana, Nirvana think you're punks, don't they? They do, yeah. That's because they're middle class Americans who've got too much money. <laughs> they tried to catch a lift off us in Los Angeles. <laughs> they wanted to get on the bus and have a look round. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I got the bass player to go down and say, Courtney Palmer's like on the side of the bus like this. And I said, Steve, don't let her on. <laughs> Steve went down to the in front of the bus and said, Sorry, love, there's only band members only. <laughs> um, uh, 
do it in a lift down to the LA mansion. It's a long way. I'd have thought a lift in LA, isn't it? Yeah, it's about yeah, it's about yeah, you're right. It's about um, fifty miles. Mm. Yeah, it's not just like. <laughs> but you think they could afford a taxi? <laughs> yeah, We've just been driving for thirty-three hours. Yeah. But are Nirvana big full fans? Yeah. Let's keep them out of the dressing room and all that. Mm. <laughs> Serious. Could you imagine ever being a Nirvana fan? I don't know what, what are Nirvana about. I don't know what, what, what they're about. He goes out with an actress or something. I've been told that what they're about is disillusioned teenage America. Some of it's all right. <laughs> and speaking of America, how do you feel about America? It's all right. It's good. But I gather you, you ran into problems because you smoked on a plane. That's all right, yeah. Uh, cigarettes. Yeah. And somebody tried to arrest you or something, right? No, I've been arrested about three times. In America? What? Internal flights, you're not allowed to smoke cigarettes. Mm. Swap teams a lot. <laughs> no joke. And just get the passport out and say, British consulate. <laughs> Shut them up. <laughs> <laughs> they believe it. <laughs> if you went to the British consulate, you'd get no help whatsoever, would you? <laughs> That's tragic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very embarrassed. How did you find about that? You told me when we had dinner. Oh, you? sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> there's. It's not a nice thing, you know, like you've got three Eddie Murphy type blokes in machine guns, and they think it's like some kind of American cop film. They get you smash it against the wall and everything, like, you've got to put your hands up and all this. Mm. And one of them's got a gun on you, like that. Oh. The other one's got, like, uh, handcuffs around your fucking. Ankles. <laughs> well, one of them's got a fucking pistol up your balls. <laughs> like, uh, like the, 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 there's the nice one and the, and the horrible one. <laughs> so there's three of them behind you, like, you like that. And then there's, like, some Eddie Murphy type guy. Like, yeah, guy, guy, guy. So <laughs> there's a white one going, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, look, if, if you're going up to this, this is for having a cigarette on the back of the fucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. <laughs> no, it's happened three times. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm <up. laughs> getting, getting into it. <laughs> now cleared off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, getting back to the face-to-face -face stuff. <clears throat> when. You were, uh, you may well not want to talk about this, but what was it like being at school? It's fine. What's <laughs> 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 what been like at school? <laughs> I mean, did you get on with it? Who were they? With the school. Did you like going to school? That was all right. It's good. And was there any subject that you preferred more than others? Or? <laughs> Leave it to it. <laughs> no, I was always in that music class, you know. <laughs> when did your father buy you your first guitar? <laughs> Do you think that the fall? Uh, how do I put this? Do you think that the fall would have been a very different kind of group if you? Well, there's only one. Uh, there's only one sort of musical person in my family, and that was Uncle Joe. <laughs> what did he do? He just play the saw. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Musical so- sounds good. Yeah. Sounds like Hitchcock music or something like that. Did he play well? I don't know, I never heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted to. <laughs> You're watching a man drowning. Have you noticed that it's kind of... You know. What was it like in 1982 when the fall were about the most unfashionable group in the world? Was that quite depressing? Yeah, it was a bit bad, yeah. Why do you think we're fashionable now? It would seem to be the case. I don't see it. Bill, the music press is constantly sucking up to you. The way, I look, the way I look at the fall is like a graph. It's like a graph, you know, and it goes up and down. Yeah. You know, people, they don't know, they look at you and they think it's easy, you know, look at him, he just makes it up as he's going along. <laughs> they do. And, and like, um, the band can't play and all that stuff. You, go, you know, I'm just used to it. I've been the same case since 1982 or whatever. But do you feel that kind of... To some extent, the music press. Main, ma- uh, mainly, is that groups have a, a, a lifespan of three years in this country, mm. and they don't like the fact that you, you, you're still going. I'm not. I'm not bothered about it. You see, I'm not in it for commercial success. I'm, I'm in it because I've got something to say, and I, and I want the band. I want to nurture it. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm not finished yet. You know. Good. You know, 15 LPs, 20 LPs, 30 LPs, doesn't bloody matter to me. Take it or leave it, don't you? Do you think that there has been a time when there's been a sort of almost like an active campaign to stop you? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't care. Who cares what they think? You, you know what it's about, so... Mm. If it isn't a oblique question, could you tell me a little bit about who is Roman Total? What? <laughs> Scraping the barrel there, Mike, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a, a, like an alter ego sort of character. Mm. It's funny, because I don't really... He, he thought that. I don't really see it as scraping the barrel because throughout your these work... These questions have got to be asked. Well, these questions have got to be asked. But it seems like an awful lot of people have tried to tell you in interviews or whatever what the fall is. Lots of people have tried to graft their own version of it. That's right. Yeah, um, no, I well, imagine. well, that's what I always said. That one thing, people tend to bring out more of themselves. They'd sort of reveal more of, them, of them themselves than the fall. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest complaint I get from fans, is that, they, they, you know, they, they read an LP review, they don't find anything out about the bloody LP. All they find out about is about the journalist's hang-ups. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and you, you find that you are what, 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 you, what you call in life is usually what you are. Mm. So if you say somebody, that bloke over there is a sex maniac, it usually means you're a sex maniac. <laughs> no, but it's true, folks. And, 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 and that's what... Um, people can't really conceive the fall. Especially reviewers, you can, but you're not. You're not a journalist. Do you think that one of the problems is that people have missed? I mean, there's a lot of humour in the fall, as well as a lot of beauty. Yeah, well, you're talking about. Do you think that? I mean, those two words. I'm I'm sorry, but but, you know what you're talking about is you know these journalists are used to talking to cretins every fucking day. Like, you know, and I don't blame them. So, so obviously, the, the brains are going <laughs> like sludge. So, so, if they get something like the fall, to them, it sort of sounds like the farm or something. 
you know, they, they can't differentiate it. <laughs> no, well, they do, it's true. Is that... I mean, I don't tend to read the music press. Neither do I. I don't, I don't read any of it. So that, that's why I'm always on the defence when you say, what about 82 and that? I don't really know. And when I say about what? Well, I don't know. When you say like 1982, mm. you're the hate, most hated group, group in the world. How do you know that? I don't know it. I just simply remember that in 1982, there was suddenly this great burst of sort of neo-disco music. And suddenly, yeah, I know, I know, I know. it's remotely intelligent. I know. Um, didn't find favour. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Boo hoo. <laughs> when you did the collaboration, well, two things. The play of your own that you did, yeah. the Hey Luciani. Yep. I saw that at the Riverside Studios um, and it seemed that that play was harder for people to understand than the Curious Orange, primarily because Curious Orange was more glossily packaged and more of a sumptuous production. Would you ever revive either of those two plays? Would you do them again like you might play Cruiser's Creek or something? Um, but the thing with the, the uh, theatre, I find, I, I found was that, that was the big uh, thing about it. Really. I was very shocked in the fact that it was um, it was a shittier business than really, the, the, the rock business, the theatre. You know. In what way? Well, nobody gets paid. There's no security on stuff like that. A bit like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my 30 quid, I'm proud of it. No, right. right. Yeah, um, yeah th then the ballet thing was the same caboodle, you know. I can't help the way I talk, Michael, you know. No. <laughs> the ballet thing was, was even worse. It was just like total chaos. There was only me and the group who were keeping things together. Yeah. Because from where I was sitting at that play, kind of... The, the play or the ballet? The, the ballet, the Curious Around. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fall was sort of blowing the rest of it off stage anyway. Yeah, um, well, I've heard that. But I don't know, I think they're the moments of dancers. Mm. Mm. Would you do another play, do you think? No, no, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say to you. I would never, wouldn't even attempt to again. Right. I never had a nervous breakdown doing that, Luciano. Mm. It's like um, six weeks in a bloody basement in bloody London. It's horrible. Mm. It's terrible. Mm. What, were you like they ring you up at 9.30 going, uh, theatre call is 8.30 and all this a.m. <laughs> I'm going, I've just gone to bed. And they go, no, we, we need to know like, the, the fourth act. I said, I haven't bleed and wrote it <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. Mm. Because I'm, I'm, I'm into stuff like Fellini and shit like that. Really? Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which You're right on the spot, you know. That's mm. the only way you ever get it good. Mm. Otherwise, it's stale. Mm. I mean, one of the things that I quite liked reading about Fellini was the way that he'd just write in stuff into the film that day that he'd read in the newspaper. Right. And but, but I tried that's what I'm saying, and I, I tried that <laughs> approach in Hey Luciani on the ballet, you know, and they just weren't having it. You know, it just doesn't fit in. It doesn't fit in with the, you know. Well, it doesn't... We presume. don't fit in with drama students and bloody the rest of them. Yeah, but <laughs> to be honest, they should be listening to you, shouldn't they? I mean, you're well, the well that's my idea, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm writing it. Mm. 
Yeah. But did you find that like, the, the, the theatre were completely inflexible about that? That, oh, Mark, you've got to do it this way? Comple you know? Yeah, completely inflexible. In fact, it, it, that, that's the funny thing about it. Was, was, um, I was like, uh, come back the rock world, or just forget it. Mm. So going through theatre and ballet, I thought, bloody hell. Mm. I mean, so at this stage, I mean, I kind of come clean and embarrass you. I mean, I believe that the gentleman sitting here is as great an artist as Wyndham Lewis and probably as great an artist as Joseph Boyce. And it's dangerous saying something like that these days because one's accused of pretension or accused of how can you possibly know. Um, I feel that I do know because Wyndham Lewis, who I think you're quite interested in, aren't you? Suffered a very Rotting Hill, a great book, a great book, great book. Um, In two words. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> need, need we go further? But there was a tremendous animosity, wasn't there, aimed at, at Lewis? And tried to lock him up, yeah. and people said that he had dreadful politics and all the rest of it. Right wing, a fascist. I've had it all. How do, you, how do you feel when people... Sorry, I keep on saying, how do you feel? I mean, I can't think of any other people way... People cover it. People are jealous, you know. You can't help that, you know. Groups want to be like you, you know. People want to write like you. I'm not interested. Gets it, gets it. I'm, I'm like that at the moment. Got it up to... And... No, but, you know, people... You get you get groups coming to your concert and they like copy your clothes. It's like, where did you get your shirt from? And I'm going like, I don't bloody know. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> you get scousers coming up, going like, where do you get your shoes from? <laughs> A shoe shop. the nature of the business. But do you know, I mean, there's this thing, particularly in Britain, where, by, well, A, two things. Firstly, Britain loathes success more than anything else. Well, I don't need success. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, the, uh, I think that one of the, I mean, I always feel that kind of like when Carl Andre stuck his bricks in the Tate Gallery, the British could never, ever get over these bricks in the gallery. And so the first thing they did was turn it into sort of like a tabloid press joke and then into a caricature. And do you, I mean, I feel increasingly that... Well, so anybody who reads the tabloid press is a fucking moron in my bad book. I'm so sorry, you know. Absolutely, but I mean, five I don't have papers do. in my house. <laughs> I don't. Mm. But do you think it's kind of like a British disease the moment anybody does anything different to yeah, try but and deal I, I, with I, it? Yeah, I just started when I was 14, you know. Mm. 20 years on now, you know. But the British term... What you read in the papers is crap. And it's, fucking, it's obvious to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Mm. No, I mean, I think so most, I was most people here would agree. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot you of... Could, hmm? You've got to patronise them. Of course, I, I have to, because, you know, I need to. Because mm. the fall isn't a commercial group, so you know any any press is good press. I don't care what they say, really. It? Mm. it sounds horrible, but well, that's what I feel. I mean, I feel that you know what is called cult what is called cultural media these days. I mean, endless supplements, endless magazine articles. They're illiterate, most of them. I, I find the people who are writing it. Mm. Do you think that's because they just? illiterate or because they're suffering from sort of information overload? No, because they don't study, unlike yourself, they, they, they don't look at what, what they really want to say. They're not really interested in writing. They're just trying to make a deadline. It's happened, it, was, it happened in America like ten years ago. Mm. Do you think that if there wasn't a pop media um, in other words, it's like an incom incomprehension of like 
they, they can't see, you know, the difference. For a start, they can't, they can't see the difference between journalists. They can't see the difference between journalism and trying to say something. They can't, they can't, they can't understand the difference between science and art. You can't understand the difference between art and poetry. What can you do about these people? Well, <laughs> you know, no, because if you get hot up, uh, sort of hit up about it, Michael, you end up like being, you know, you get upset. And <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, I mean, it seems at the moment that what media is doing is just talking. You don't to understand itself. syntax, right? And they can't spell. <laughs> We don't understand syntax. We don't know the difference between a poet and an artist. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did, I'll tell you, I did my top ten books for like the Sunday t uh, Times or something. Mm. This woman, she shouldn't urge. I, so I had to get me top ten books. So I picked like 14. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. <laughs> So she hadn't heard of, she had, she'd only heard of three of them. <laughs> this is the literary edi editor of the Times. Mm. <laughs> she'd never heard of Raymond Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Raymond Chandler, you know, the one, the one that all the, the programmes imitate. <laughs> it's got, oh, no, no, no. Can, what were the other books on the list, can you? Jim Thompson, Nietzsche. Mm -hmm. The book comes out, uh, the article comes out, it's like, Red Nietzsche at 15. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what books do you need then, love? She goes, <laughs> she goes, I'm just getting into Jane Austen. <laughs> I said, how old are you? She says, 34. <laughs> She said, have you ever read any of, any of his work? <laughs> I said, yeah, at 14, it was crap. <laughs> so you read Nietzsche at 15, did you? And then, then the headline comes out, read Nietzsche at 15. <laughs> She'd heard of Nietzsche. She, she hadn't heard of, her, like, 12 of the books. Mm. She's a literary editor of our country. <laughs> yeah. Think about that, Bob. Because, it w I, I hope it's not giving away a secret that you're occasionally asked to lecture to the James Joyce Society in, right. in Cambridge. Yeah. I mean, that must be a, a meeting of mighty opposites. I mean, how, how do those things go? I mean, what do they do? Do they sit around and talk about James Joyce? I'll just go and get the money and piss on. <laughs> Sorry, can we change the subject? Yes. Do you want to ask me anything about the group? Mm, yes. <laughs> One of the things I didn't want to do earlier is ask you questions about the group, so I feel that you're probably asked non-stop about it. Um, as I say, people trying to graft meanings onto the fall. Um, people sort of die-hard early fans who say, oh, well, after Slates they lost it, and now they've got computers and things. Um, I think that what you're doing is, like the fall always seems to be based on repetition to some extent. Right. It's become a bit of a cliche to say it. Um, and do, do you think that the group is still works on that basis? I don't, I don't stop and think about that. I'm sorry? I don't stop and think about that. Right. Because the records, I mean the last two records, I mean the infotainment scan and Code Selfish, right. seem to me to be very, very hard. I mean, sort of tough records, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and that would seem to belie some of the recent stuff that's been written to say, oh, the fall, they finally got commercial. Um, and I just don't see Every that at LP all. Every LP we bring out, they always say, it's the same old story. This is more commercial than the last one. And does that annoy you? Or does it just not bother you, one way or the other? No, I just used to it, that's one. Do you want to ask some questions from the audience? Absolutely. Um, in the words of Morrissey, I tried and I failed, but um, I, anybody, <laughs> thank you. Uh, 
please feel free, anybody who'd like to ask any question. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, what do you like? You, you often talk about things in your music that you don't like, about this country particularly. I wonder what you did like about it. The country? Well, yeah, country, people. I think it's great. It's the best place in the world. I mean, I mean I'm just looking at things like, um, songs like A Lot of Wind and Daytime Television. I mean, I'm not talking about major things, but... Um, I find proof, you know, the, the, the cynicism of them sometimes. Right. But I just it gives the wrong impression, I think. I just wonder if uh, there are similar kinds of things that you really enjoy. Similar kind of popular culture things. How would you mean? Well, um, uh, well, for example, a lot of women. Yeah. So a lot of men this uh, sort of a diatribe against daytime television. Right. Um, Which I despise. Right. <laughs> right and so. Um, but I wonder if there's some of the types of things that you <coughs> particularly like. Some of the, I mean, not talking about, day, obviously talking about daytime television, but other Well, I like it, of course, because it, it encourages me to write. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't tend to write... No, but, but, but no, I, I, I'm a pop singer, so I, I, you know, unlike a lot of other people who have to go to bloody work at nine o'clock, you know, that's all I bloody do sometimes. So you're saying that it's the things that you don't like that inspire you the most? Uh, in a lot of ways, yeah. When, when I hear a really appalling record, it, it usually inspires me to write another song. When, when I feel like packing it up, you know, just uh, I think rock music is a very abused form. I must sincerely believe that because I think it's a it's a it's a really good form, and it's too easy for a lot of people. Is that, is that the kind of thing you're saying in Idiot or Shadow? Stuff like that. Yeah. So who, I mean, who music do you like? Who do you like? Me, I like rockabilly and stuff like that and reggae. Like Sorry? So you like Morrissey then? Do I like Morrissey? Well, he's going with Rockabilly for a while. Has he? <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say to him on the set then? What? On top of the tops, you must have made him on top of the tops. Well, I was going to say something about what you two have you talked about if you met last week. No, I know Steve from uh, ten years ago. Yeah, but do, do you feel anything coming? What? He's, he's shit scared of me. <laughs> 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 Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. You say about people reading tabloid newspapers and all. What do you think can be done to overcome that I can't hear you, can't you speak up? Sorry, sir. Yeah, you offer good observations on that. Um, you say that people are quite stupid with readers. What do you think? Yeah, what, what, yeah what, what answers have I got? You know? yeah. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so, what are you saying? Aren't you? You're, saying that, you're saying I'm a, I'm a clever dick. Who's got no? Who can moan about things? This is the populist sort of version of me. I don't don't write songs that, that just complain. What would I like in its place? Well, that that that's you know. Exactly. <laughs> I, th I think it's important that somebody should monitor these things. I mean, your question is just the, the usual bloody thing, you know. Who's this smart aleck? That's what you're saying. I've got loads of solutions. You know. I wouldn't want to put them in practice. I mean, we all, we all know our perfect world. But it's each to his own, isn't it? So 
what he bloody needs in this bloody country. It's true. If you were ever asked to write a manifesto, Mark, do you think you'd be able to do it? You used to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years ago. Did you, was it sort of kind of like an artistic manifesto or a... No, political party manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> what were the basis of it? What? What were the basis of it? Kill everybody with glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Down. No, I used to be a communist, I'm sorry. You used to be a communist? That was, that was ten years ago. Oh. I don't know. Mark, you wrote the um, telephone thing on uh, extra tech. Right. You think you've never been a source of interest to uh, MI5 or security services, bearing in mind what you just said about communist involvement? Um, well, I, I was... never been tapped? Well, that, that's why I wrote the song, because I was being tapped, yeah. What I used to do was like just you know like shout down the phone and <laughs> cut the rip the phone out. In fact, it's a lot worse now because I know people who work in BT. They, they tell me these things for a lot when they've got nothing to do in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, they do. You know, they go, oh well, yeah, here we go. Uh, here's Bob Geldof or something. <laughs> Is Mark Smith? Let's have you know. We've got nothing to do, so let's have uh, a listen in on these people. So one time they were listening on me, and I just went, "What the fuck are you doing?" You know. So. Did you get an answer. Oh yeah, they just put the phone on. They can't believe it. You sussed them out. Is that right? <laughs> Any more? Yeah. Um, there was some talk in the paper a few weeks ago before we came down with David Weatherwood. Um, and that now seems to be off. We made a bit of a friend of mine who loved David Weatherwood in the East Region. I wonder if there's any stories about him. No, nah, it's different people, really. It wasn't going to work, you know. Why well, do you like Andy? No. <laughs> I don't know much about him, and, you know. We gave him the stuff and it wasn't going anywhere, so I took it back off him. Any more? Yeah, is it? You serious? You're serious? Your writing over the years, Mark, has been very influenced by your... I know you. I know you from ages, but... You've had your hair cut, haven't you? <laughs> Your reasons and, and He's history. fucking mad at him. <laughs> what? Can you, um, what, as, a, as a widely read, almost in a story, what are the lessons that we can learn from our history? If you had to put it in a couple of sentences, what we've been saying for 16 years. I've just got, uh, you know, writing to do and we'll carry on. Nobody buys it or whatever. I always get this crap, you know, like put it in a book and all this. I'm not going to. I'm not. You're right, good to see you. <laughs> lots of people, lots of publishers. Yeah, no. oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, is that okay? Yeah. Lots, lots is that of. Right? Lots of publishers I know are very keen to get you to write a novel. Mm. Are you saying you, well, not a novel necessarily, but a book? I don't get around to it. No. Would you ever bring out a, a book just of the of the writing you've done for the fall? No. Even though, because I mean, those pages are very beautiful. I mean, <coughs> those you know, with the typing and with the errors and the crossings out, as they've occurred in artwork, they right. do look like very right. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Pieces. I mean, I know. I know but, what you're saying, Mike. Thank you. But <laughs> uh, it would be nice, really. I mean, simply from a sort of art historical point of view, to have them between covers. But would you feel very uncomfortable about that? No, it's a funny thing. People have always been on the case about. Oh, I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. Mm. I 
Kunt je Maybe when I'm like 50 or something. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I think, you know, I think the British novel is dead, apart from people like you, to be quite frank. Thank you. <laughs> William Blake. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to be with them, you know, mm. if you understand me. Oh, yeah. I don't like literature, it's either. Mm. It's always been like that. How do you, I mean, in some ways, sorry, in some ways, Go you, you're, um, here you are at the Institute of Contemporary Art, sort of like, you know, the bastion of critical theory and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. How do you react when people refer to you as an artist, you know, capital A, in meaning in the sort of... I'm an artist, yeah. I've been an artist for about 12 years. But, and? Mm, what? Yeah. No, just that kind of, in some ways, being stigmatised as an artist can be as bad as being stigmatised as... I don't well, know. No, nobody's ever even called me an artist. Surely they have. Well, so that's my strength, you know. The, the strength is being undercover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I see that. Any more from the floor? Yes. Pretty good, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Meaning in the sort of I'm an artist, yeah. I've been an artist for about 12 years. <laughs> but, and? Mm, what? No. no, just that kind of, in some ways, being stigmatised as an artist can be as bad as being stigmatised as... I well, no, nobody's ever even called me an artist. Surely they have. Well, so that's my strength, you know. The, the, the strength is being undercover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I can see that. Any more from the floor? Yes. Uh, what kind of response do you get abroad in European countries where they don't really understand the... Pretty good, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Even in America, West Coast, especially. Well, the only place that doesn't take us in Europe is France, which suits me fine. <laughs> Guy. Carry on, carry on, sorry. That's right. Sorry? No, I don't know what you're saying, Carl. Mm. Sorry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is that? I missed that, I'm afraid, in time. <laughs> what? The orange book? Oh, the... Oh, the orange book. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's a good idea. No, well, I don't... Yeah, that, that's what you're saying, yeah. But I wouldn't let him. It's my fault. <laughs> you get me what? Shoes. <laughs> okay, any more? In a shoe shop. Yeah. yeah. 
can't see any of these bastards. Oh, it rides up at the very bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that any sort of other bands, certainly United bands, that you, you like and you admire, particularly and whether you still buy records or not. Yeah, I buy loads of records, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I buy a stereo lab and stuff like that, and um, I don't buy anything. I, you know, I, I always went with the contention that 99% is shit, you know. So I buy jazz, re- jazz records, I buy rave records, and, and, and I buy, you know, like rock and roll records. I even buy 60s compilations from Woolworths when I feel like it. <laughs> But no, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any good ones. I think it's bad. What, what, what lyric writers do you use? Well, you're laughing. I don't know. I like Orbison and Weller and Morrissey. Roy Orbison? Yeah. You never wrote a song. Sorry? You never wrote any songs. You like to hear all his songs and everyone else's songs. So you like Ray Orbison anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Any more? Yeah, who else? Sorry. Who else? You like Paul Weller? Yeah. Hang on. Uh, yeah, what was the last song he wrote? Sorry. <laughs> what was the last song he wrote? Hmm? Well, uh, he got two sides around. Well, who's the other one you like? Uh, Morrissey. Right. <laughs> Any more? <laughs> yeah. Now, what are your reasons for bringing out cover versions like It gets the group working on. Is it purely money? What? He said, is it purely money? No. Nah. <clears throat> they don't sell out for a lot, the cover versions. <laughs> no, our cover versions don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Tried to. I like I like Nick's lyrics very much, but but the novel I can't really get round. Sorry. I don't know the group called Sabado. Sorry, I don't know the group, but I don't think Mark really. called Sabado. Yeah, I've got, I've got their records, yeah. Great. <laughs> no, they are, they're good. <laughs> Is that out, Michael? Is that alright for Spark? I think that's probably good. Um, just a tiny moment. Um, yeah, second. Do you write this and do this way longer to write all the songs that you do? What, John?